Hi, for those who don't know me, I'm Ruth Childs. Um, I'm an expert in curing focal dystonia and particularly with musicians. So welcome to this second video in the series that I wanted to record around the causes of focal dystonia and uh, how we can work with how can we can work with those causes in, in order to cure it. Okay, so what I wanted to do today was talk about the autonomic nervous system. So really get into more of the scientific aspect of, of uh, the causes. So this is my theory around focal dystonia. Um, and it's something that I've developed over a number of years of working with, uh, I've spent nearly 20 years now working with any type of performance block, particularly physical performance blocks. Um, and then in the last five years or so, working specifically with focal dystonia. So this is from my experience um, and from my training around the nervous system. So we can think of the autonomic nervous system, sometimes it's called the polyvagal system, as uh, having three basic levels to it. And we can put them on a ladder. So at the top of the ladder, what we have is well-being. Now, well-being is when we feel connected to ourselves. We, the nervous system is in relaxation, even though it might be active, it's not activated. Um, it's when we feel connected to ourselves, connected to others, connected to our music, connected to nature, connected to life. Um, and just a sense of everything being in the right place at the right time and everything flowing. Some of the most highly specific states of well-being are flow states and flow often people think that flow is just one state actually it isn't there are a number of different flow states and um, we can work to develop those very very specifically and have them at, at hand whenever we want and certainly at least half of my work is is uh, developing those flow states in my clients, showing them how to connect with them, how to strengthen them at a neuronal network. So, so, network, so the neuronal networks of that flow state become really strong and really accessible so that at will they can enter into those flow states and certainly in relationship to the instrument, music um, and the way the music flows through them in terms of, of the way they play, both in practice and in performance. Um, so that's at the top of the ladder. Then we come, if we come down the ladder, we then enter into the two different specific survival states that the autonomic nervous system has. Now bear in mind that the brain, at its most, its most primary function is survival. Okay, it's our own personal survival. Um, so it's wired for survival. So given any choice, it will always first off primarily go to survival. Um, you know, the brain, it's been very well proven that the brain has a tendency towards negativity to spot things that might be a threat. And in fact, um, I've talked about this before, I think, in, in, the, in the first video I did. But the thinking part of our brain, the brain where we give instructions, where we give instructions to our hand, to our mouth, to our breathing, actually only works on 10 to 60 bits of perceptual information per second. Whereas the deep part of the brain where all our survival instinct comes from is working on 11 million bits of information per second. Now, what that means is that there's something that's called neuroception going on, which means that that deep and really fast part of the brain is constantly scanning through our five senses what's going on around us to pick up any signs of threat. None of that ever reaches, ever comes up to the conscious mind. So for instance, I mean, I've had the experience, and I think, I think many people have had this experience, or something similar, where um, I was about to pull out of a, of a junction in the car, and I slammed the foot on, my foot on the brake. It felt like an intuition to slam my foot on the brake. And then it was only afterwards that I realized consciously that a car coming from the other direction had jumped the traffic lights. Now, uh, that felt like it was intuition, but really what had happened was that deeper part of my brain had already seen that way before the conscious bit of my brain had been had realized and had made me slam my foot on the brake, had controlled my body for me to help me survive, to enable my survival. Okay, so we really need to know the power of what's going on around survival in our brain. 
and all the information that's coming in way below our conscious awareness that's about keeping us safe. So let me talk about the two survival states of, of the autonomic nervous system. One of them is, is what's called sympathetic arousal. Now that's any type of hyper state. So when you are demanding, when you are perfectionistic, when you get your head fixed on needing to get this bit of the piece right or needing to get this scale right or needing to get this movement right and you obsess around that you're you're in sympathetic your nervous system is in survival state it's in sympathetic arousal okay whenever you feel accelerated in the way that you, the way that you're playing or you're practicing or you have performance nerves um, or you feel like you need to get things right or you're self-critical um, any type of hyper state where you're not just in this completely relaxed well-being state where everything is fine just as it is and you're in the here and now in this present moment anything else that's a hyper state it means that your nervous system is in survival and then at the bottom of the ladder we have something that's technically called dorsal vagal collapse mm -hmm. which is where um the, the nervous system goes into sort of implodes. So those are any hy hypo states. Hypo states might be any form of depression, any form of I just can't face this, I can't do it, I'm no good, I'll never get it, um, everybody's better than me, or any type of, you know, the mind going, staying in blank, in whiteness, um, being completely blocked mentally is, dorsal vag is a dorsal vagal collapse state. Now, the thing that's most important to remember around this, when the, when the nervous system is in survival mode, it is your brain, this deep part of your brain, this really fast 11, 11 million bits of perceptual information per second is inhibiting your fine motor skills. So there is a natural process in the brain to switch off, to inhibit fine motor skills and give preference to gross muscle strength because survival is about preparing the body to be able to fight its way out, to be able to run away or to go into freeze where all the muscles become completely blocked, the diaphragm becomes completely blocked so that there is the most minimum movement possible. So the body looks like it's dead. And that means that the uh, a predator either thinks you're already dead and goes past you or doesn't notice that you're there. OK, so if you have if you in general in your life are in a survival state, your, your nervous system is in either one of these states. Now, we've really naturalized sympathetic arousal as being a natural state. I know many people that that the whole wake of that waking hours are in that state, um, and it's not natural. The the nervous system can only really sustain that for about twenty percent of the time. So if you are generally in that state, um, or if when you're practicing, you are in that state, it's as if you're asking your car to go forwards and backwards at the same time on down the, down the motorway, down the freeway, which is just impossible. So it reaches a point where the brain just, just gets confused, you know, because you're asking, you, you're from the conscious part of your brain, from the slow part of your brain, you're forcing your brain to create my, uh, fine motor skills. And then this deep part of your brain is in, at the same time inhibiting them and putting all all its neuronal all, um, stimulating the neuronal connections that create most gross muscle strength, and those two processes are happening at the same time. So if you prolong that over time, what's going to happen is is just the connections get confused. The map of the hand or the map of the embouchure gets confused. The brain can't cope with that any longer. And for me, that's the principal cause of focal dystonia. So what we need to be able to do, um, and I do this using brain spotting, is to be able to get deep into the uh, deepest part of the brain to connect into the neural networks that are creating that uh, survival state. Now, sometimes that's purely related to music, 
but very often and for many, many of the clients that I work with, it has to do with adverse events in their childhood, uh, parental relationships or relationships with their parents, um, difficult circumstances that they lived through as a child. That just has, it's almost like the um, nervous system has got switched into survival as a constant. That was certainly my experience. Okay, my, my nervous system was in constant survival mode from, you know, from really very early age. Um, and so we need to, to get right into those neural networks and, and rewire them. Okay, so this a part of the work is really getting to have to rewire to deactivate the nervous system so that your nervous system can realize that in the here and now I'm safe. Okay, so that's a very important part of the work. And then the other really important part of the work is developing, as I said earlier in, in this video, developing the ability to be in well-being and flow states um, so that that becomes your natural day by day, minute by minute um, experience of life and experience of your instrument and experience of your mu music. So I really wanted to explain what's going on in the autonomic nervous system so that so that you can understand where focal dystonia comes from and the basis of the work that's required in order to resolve it. Because we, in my in my opinion, in my experience, we can work on the hand and retraining the hand. Um, yet if we don't dis deactivate the activation, the arousal in the sympathetic nervous system or raise up the collapse that's happening in, in, in if this dorsal vagal collapse, then this, this cross wiring that's constantly going on in the brain will still happen, which is why I think often the retraining of the hand is a very, very slow process. And we can really certainly accelerate that process. And in fact, you know, most of my clients just by, you know, without even working anywhere around their hand or their embouchure or their vocal cords, just by working through their life events that have created that activation, about 70 or 80% of the dystonic symptoms just fall away quite naturally. So um, I hope that's interesting to you. I hope that makes sense to you. Most people, when I begin to explain it, say to me, oh yes, that really does make sense um, as to why, uh, you know, I can really, really relate to, to what you're talking about. Uh, once again, uh, if love to hear your comments, if and if anybody wants to talk further with about this with me, please do be in touch. I'm going to leave the link to my website above, um, and from there you can you can send me uh, a message or you can you can send me a WhatsApp message. Okay, so thanks for listening to me, and I wish you all the well all well being all well being in relationship to your life and your music.